In today's episode, we're going to be giving you guys three breakout prospects that we're very excited for in 2023. Maybe not necessarily the names that you'd be monitoring throughout the season, but ones that we're very excited about. And we'll also be reacting to the latest World Series odds released by MLB.com and much more on this episode of Jay's Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Brionis, alongside host Nick Goss. A little bit of a change in our, our schedules today, so we won't have our pregame live stream. We probably won't have the postgame reaction video either, as uh, both of us are going to be busy tonight. So we uh, thought we'd bring you this news video instead. And uh, we wanted to give you three breakout prospects that we're very excited for in 2023. Might be some names that you're familiar with, uh, might be some names that you're not familiar with. And we'll also be reacting to a ton of other things like World Series odds. Uh, our opening day starter has been announced as well. So uh, there's plenty pr plenty to break down today. Yeah, Lars, before we get into it, make sure to hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 6,700 subscribers. So if you hit the button, it means a lot. And let's get into the first player of the three, which is Brandon Barriera. Now, we haven't personally covered him, I don't think at all, on the channel, at least in depth. Of course, we've talked about him. He is our number two ranked prospect as of the updated odds. And I'll pop up some screenshots here now. There's no stats for him since this is his first official season. But Peter, what are your thoughts on what you've seen from him or maybe heard about him and what it looks like for him as I pop up the uh, his stats here with his, his grades? Well, just the quick uh, progression that he's had so far. He's yep. already up to 98, 99 miles an hour. Uh, he was a first-round pick out of high school. I think they sli they signed him for above slot value. Yep. So they're very high on Brandon Barriera. And, I mean, for good reason. He's a lefty that throws in the high 90s, and he's still only 18 years old. So he's got a lot of room to grow. It's his first full professional season, so it's going to be a while before we finally see him at the major league level. But man, he he's already starting to look like a, like a Ricky Tiedem in light at this point, just because of uh, the the metrics and the peripherals that he has from the left hand side and the and the stuff that he brings as well. Yeah, and he jumped up the system pretty quickly all the way to number two. And you can look at his scouting grades here. I had him up briefly. He was picked twenty third in twenty twenty two last year's draft, and like you said, he's not projected to be uh, with the Blue Jays until twenty twenty six. But as of now, as an 18-year-old, he has a 55-grade fastball, 55-grade slider, 55-grade changeup, 55-grade control with an overall 50. So slightly above average in every single one of his uh, three pitches there along with control. And he's actually, I guess he just turned 19. But either way, it's the same thing. And this is what they had to write about him. Just a quick thing here. While not a massive or projectable presence on the mound, and he's only six foot two, he shows promising stuff. Sat in the low 90s as a high schooler, but has you know has been touching 97 and 98 during the fall bullpen sessions, which is what you touched on there, and basically just saying that with fellow you know lefty Ricky Tiedemann in the system, Barriera could uh, could be the next one up, maybe after and assuming after you know he graduates into the system, that's Ricky Tiedemann, and I don't know, he's a super exciting prospect, and a lot of people in our pregame shows and our live stream have discussed how. Maybe he'll be the, you know, Ricky Tiedemann, I guess, replacement in the pipeline once Tiedemann gets called up, whether it's this year or next. Yeah, and you look at those grades, they're all 55, but then his overall is 50. So that's a little bit weird to me. And I expect that fastball velocity to jump up quite a bit if they do update those rankings. Yeah. I mean, 98, 99 from the left-hand side is no joke. And he might be part of the future, but he could also be a very big trade chip for the Toronto Blue Jays. Now, you may want to hold on to Ricky Tiedemann because he's a little bit closer to the major leagues and a little bit more projectable than Brandon yeah. Barriera. Yeah. But at the same time, you have this prospect as well. So it, it kind of gives you the option to choose. Do, do we want to get the, the better player right now and, and give up Ricky Tiedemann? Or do we want to get, I don't know, someone not as good that we would get for Ricky Tiedemann? But still keep Ricky Tiedemann. So, I don't know. It's a cool conversation to have. They're very similar type prospects and both very valuable in the system. Yeah, and maybe they end up keeping both, which is also very possible and would be very Jays-like regarding their pitchers. But let's get into yeah. the second one now. Let us know your thoughts on him, which is a bit more of a common one. We saw a lot of him during spring training, but it is a Relvis Martinez now. The main reason I, and I guess Peter as well, wanted to bring this one up is his spring has been very, very impressive. And he's personally, at least from my, you know, the eye test and just from everything like that, he's jumped up a little bit on the uh, on the chart for me personally, whether it's whether he gets you know, called up this season or next season. But what have you been impressed with him in spring training? Because we've been able to see him recently, or maybe just his tools in general as I pop up this here now. And he does have that 60 power that 
Would not surprise me if it jumps up to a 65 or maybe even a 70 by the time he gets called up to the majors. Right. Now, for him, it's always been the discipline that's been his pitfall. He hasn't been able to lay off those low and away sliders and those tough pitches that uh, that everyone's throwing at him, trying to get him out. But he kind of uh, he kind of changed that tune a little bit in spring training. He started to take a few more walks, started to look a little bit more comfortable up there in the batter's box, and the power is there. I mean, it's not going anywhere. He's only 20 years old or 21 now, and he's already got so much pop to boast and guys a very exciting prospect we compare him to addison barger just because of the positions that they play and i think we came to the consensus that addison barger probably has the highest floor of the two but arelvis martinez has the highest potential and if he can put it all together mentally and just hone in all of his skills on the field then man i see no reason as to why he can't be a star at the major league level yeah, I agree, and this has been very encouraging throughout spring. And again, I'll pop them up one more time. 45 hit tools, 60 power, 45 runs, 60 arm with a 45 field. So a couple, you know, plus plus, a couple of uh, below average tools, but I think they'll continue to progress. And you can see his stats uh, here, which is obviously from his last season in 2022 at Double A, where he struggled a little bit. And then if you look at his spring stats as well, which I don't have a screenshot for, but it was a limited time, but he had, I believe, a well over, I think it was 1,100 plus OPS and he was just dominant at the spring level but overall I'm super excited for Relvis him versus Addison Berger has kind of been our talk over spring but do you have any final thoughts on him and where you might see him getting called up next year or and we gotta we gotta take it with a grain of salt as well because it is spring training yeah, and he yeah. did very well in spring training last season as well and everyone was thinking is this guy next up you know is he the is he the Matt Chapman replacement when Matt Chapman is gone but hasn't uh, hasn't turned out to be that way and addison barger in a sense kind of overtook him and i think he might have taken that personally to a certain extent and decided to really turn up in the spring yeah i agree and uh, spring training is always you got to keep it with a grain of salt for for everyone not just the uh, prospects well, let's get on to the third one now who is uh, hayden jenger and we also saw him in spring and he was fairly impressive he did some good stuff out there but Peter, I know you've been a you've been a Hayden Jenger guy for a little bit now. What were your thoughts on him this spring? What do you expect for him going forward? And I'll pop up his grades here. He has a 60 fastball, 55 slider, 50 changeup, 50 control, with an overall 45, which is weird. I don't know how they do the overalls, but yeah. I'm sure there is a, I'm sure there is a reason there that we just don't know about. But what have your thoughts been on him and uh, so far in the spring? And I guess anything that you've seen from him. I mean, he could potentially have an impact in 2023 if someone were to get injured because yep. he is projected as a starter and. Man, his stuff really impressed me. His fastball was 96, 97 throughout the spring. And if you just look at his earned run average and you know his Ks per nine during the spring, you might not be too impressed. But oh, I, I just love the stuff. I love the stuff. It was it was hard. It was breaking. It was breaking very well. And I think he's got great potential in that arm and probably one of the more underrated prospects in the Jays system, just considering how many great performances there were all throughout the spring. Yeah, I agree. I liked what I saw from him. And like you said, the ERA in spring isn't really something that's super important. It's more of that stuff. And he definitely impressed there. As you can look at his stats throughout the uh, you know, AAA last year, he pitched to a 3.31 ERA, which is very impressive as he improved, you know, quite dramatically over his AA numbers there. So 32 innings strikes out, you know, about one per inning, which is interesting. But I don't know. Overall, very, very interesting prospect. And let us know out of the three prospects which you think or which you're most excited for, maybe what you think will have the biggest impact on the Blue Jays going forward. And, uh, yeah, let us know. And let's move on to the uh, the next topic now, which is the MLB ranks the Blue Jays and gives the World Series odds and kind of puts them in, in tiers. It was an interesting way they did it. And uh, I guess I'll pop it up here now. This is the tier that the Blue Jays ultimately we're in, which is tier two, get a little deeper this time around. So they are slightly fall out of the World Series contenders tier. And it says this group of three teams all made the playoffs last year, but none went deep and none have even won a single AL and L game since, of course, Toronto in 2016. They should all be strong in 2023, but there's a way to have a successful year that doesn't end with a ring. And the teams are the Blue Jays, the Cardinals, and the Mariners. Peter, let me get your thoughts on this. I know you know you saw the other teams that were in. You can check the article. It's on MLB.com if you want to look at the whole thing. But I guess focusing on this tier, maybe compared to other teams in the uh, in tier one, there. What is your? What do you think this is fair? Or do you think the Jays got a little bit a uh, little bit disrespected there? No, I like this. I like this. And last year they were in that tier one, and we know what happened 
when playoff team but when playoff time came around and it was not a pretty sight to see if you were a Blue Jays fan so I want them to prove it this year I want them to be a little bit underrated and I think our our comments got taken a little bit out of context yesterday when we said the Jays were disrespected we were more talking about Alejandro Kirk yeah we understand that they had seven players in the top 100 but they deserved an eighth in Alejandro Kirk and he deserves to be in that conversation so it, it maybe got taken a little bit out of context but I like where they're at I like that they're in tier two um maybe I would put the Phillies in tier two now as well just because uh um what, what's his name um why is it skipping my Reese Hoskins yeah. Reese Hoskins <laughs> is out for the year now I don't know why uh, that that was slipping my mind and Bryce Harper as well is going to miss quite a significant amount of time so I don't know if they're the same team that they might have been when the first round of odds came out, but maybe that's the only switch I would make. I like the Jays in that tier two with the Mariners. I don't think the Cardinals are necessarily as good as those two teams, either. but I um I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't think of it as disrespect. I think of it as now you got to prove it because the talent's there. It's just time to put it all together. No, I completely agree. I would probably put the Cardinals down to tier three. Um, but at the same time, they could surprise everyone and bring up the tier two. And I'll pop it up one more time for you all if you want to have a quick final look. And again, check it out on MLB.com if you want to see the whole list. It's pretty long. Obviously, they rank every single team. But I think the Jays are fair here. You can argue that they're World Series contenders. But I understand not putting them there yet, especially because they haven't really had proved anything like the other teams have at the uh, – or most of the teams at the top. But yeah, the final topic now – I don't have a chapter for it, but it was released about a few minutes before we're starting this recording, which was the opening day starter, and we were right. It is Alec Manoa is officially the opening day starter in six days from now, next Thursday, against the St. Louis Cardinals, where, uh, yeah, and I'll, Peter, I'll let you touch on this really quick and can also reveal the starter for the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Yeah, so Alec Manoa, no doubt, I mean, we thought he was going to be the opening day starter, and... It turns out to be the truth. Uh, I I never knew his. I knew his nickname was Big Puma, but I don't know how that came about. But uh, if you can enlighten me on that, I, I'd love to know. But uh, the starter for the St. Louis Cardinals is Miles Michaelis. It was supposed to be Adam Wainwright, but he's going to start the year on the injured list. So we're going to see a little bit of a different look out of St. Louis. Similar pitchers, though, not too much velocity, decent movement on their pitches. So uh, it should be it should be a decent test opening weekend. But man, am I excited. Only under a week now. Under a week. Six days. Yeah, it's incredible. And uh, now the starter has been named officially. It's officially baseball time. It's officially opening day time. And like you said, six days away, less than a week. So we'll have it all covered for you. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. And we'll see you in tomorrow's video. Thanks.